How you guys doing this lovely, lovely, lovely Tuesday evening? Welcome, welcome, welcome to, I guess it's the first of its kind, conversations with my pops. I'm super excited today. I'm going to be having my father on my IG live today. We want to have conversations. Um, and i um, going to talk a bit about fatherhood, you know. Now I'm a father and um, get to talk to my father about being a father, right? And just pick his brain. I think a lot of times, um, you know, what we don't do as a generation, we don't get to glean from the wisdom of the people that we have around us because we take them for granted because it's always assumed that they're always going to be there. And um, you want to make sure to um, not do that, be intentional about it. And Father's Day came about and I thought, you know, it would be great to have a conversation with my dad. So we're going to do that today. Um, super excited. I'm waiting for him to come on. So... Let's see what today's gonna be. Okay, my dad's on. Okay, gentlemen, my father is in the building. I just requested him to come on, on the live, so. <laughs> pa! Good to see you, Jimmy. <laughs> Hi, dad. Good to see you. How are you? And doing? thank you for inviting me on your platform. Thank you for, thank, thank you for coming on my platform, Dad. Um, yeah. I'm super, super excited about this. Let me turn this volume up, make sure I can hear you all the way. There you go. That's on me. How's your, how's your day been, Dad? Very good. Very good. God has, yeah. been, good to, God has been good to me. Very good. A, a, a lot of people are excited about, about, about our conversation. I see all the comments already coming yeah. up as well. <laughs> you know? So for those of you who, where you're watching, where I get my good looks from, from my father, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the man that I say this all the time, Dad. I say that you're the only man that could be my father. The only man that can father me is Pastor Tafu <laughs> Dukoya. You know, um, so I'm excited to have you on this platform. It and was you are, um, and you are a worthy son, man. I oh, you. thank you, Daddy. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. That means a lot. It was Father's Day, and I thought to myself, I was um, on my computer, and I just had the thought. I said, you know what? I haven't actually had a conversation with dad, you know, on my IG live. I thought it'd be good, you know, talking, talking about Father's Day to have a conversation about fatherhood. And so that, that was where the idea came from. And then I called you to ask if you'd be open to it. So I have a bunch of questions that I've written down. Um, and um, I'm excited. So yeah. you ready, dad? I'm um, ready, my God's grace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So let's, 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 let's start from the beginning. I, I know you've told us stories a bit about about your childhood, about how you grew up. And, you know, every, every time you tell us your childhood stories, I feel like I'm listening to a Nollywood, a Nollywood movie because you tell us about growing up in the North and how that was with your siblings and your parents. Um, you know, it's always very humbling to hear your story. Um, one of the things you mentioned was how growing up you never liked how sometimes adults would try to intim intimidate um, you as a child and try to, you know, mute your mute your voice because you were you know they felt okay you say he's a child or they were children and you're very intentional you said at a young age that your children wouldn't grow up that way that you would raise your children to have a voice i mean not be rude but to be outspoken so do you think you succeeded in that um and how do you handle it when there's that conflict in terms of you know difference of opinions even with us you know today yeah well um first you answer the question um if I think I succeeded, I think by God's grace, I did. Yes. I did, I did. You see, my dad um, was a very, very gentle man. A very, very gentle man. And permit me to say, almost dear to a fault. Mm. I mean, uh, his virtues were something else. And I, I learned a lot from him. And um, but I saw some things I did that was like, which rubbed on us. Uh, and that's, um, let me define my own way of nurturing by God's grace. I came to a point in life where I thought, like I said, that there are certain things I would not allow. I would not allow my children to be timid. Um, I came up with this idea that being of a child, you must be able to balance two things. Um, courtesy and confidence. Courtesy and confidence. Oh, yeah. And when I talk on leadership with people, I tell them that ability to define certain things will help you to go a long way. Number one, the difference between faith, really working and acting in faith, 
I'm being prideful. Mm. Number two, what's humility? Is it humility? Of course it's not. You know? So I have a series of such words that I define, and I get people to go do their studies and define it, and come tell me we are on the ladder because of themselves. So I made up my mind that um, I would balance courtesy with confidence. When I would bring it up my children, by God's grace, the aspect of courtesy I never wanted to lose because that will impact on your people relations. A man that's not a people's person will not go far. Everything starts and ends on relationships. Whether how you deal with your wife or deal with your children or deal with your peers in life or whatever area of endeavor you find yourself, you will have to deal with people. And so courtesy is very important. Mm. But having said that, you must be confident, be able to speak up when you have to. Refuse any intimidation by any human being whatsoever without being rude. You know? And uh, I, by God's grace, I think I'm achieved it. I mean, look at you. <laughs> and look at um, you. So I'm grateful to God. Yes, I have. So, how do I handle now that you guys are there now and then you have, um, you have your opinions? Man, it takes a wise man to know that at this stage, in fact, what happens is the stages. Hmm. Uh, the way you handle the child is different from the way you handle the adolescent. It's different from the way you handle the adult. See, your child, your adult child, is your friend if you've done a good work. Otherwise, you have problems, problems, and problems in your head. Um, we normally we tell ourselves some things. We say, look, we tell a child what to do, what not to do. When the child is grown up, there's no more room for telling them what to do, what not to do. While we're growing up, we decide for them. But when they are grown up, based on what you have trained them by and the kind of training you've given them, then they make their decisions. So if you see an adult making all wrong decisions, I think we may have to trace it back to two things. His background or his company. Mm. Uh -huh. So, what do I, how do I feel when your pedos are kind of different from what I'm thinking? Well, I feel okay. Mm. The man is calm. The woman mm. is calm. Mm. And I'm like, no, I try to, hey, they say to my daddy, I say, hey, they say, yes, the daddy, said, no, 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 I say, the daddy, then I back off. And I go back and say, well, what's he thinking about? Then I begin to try to put myself in his shoes. Try to put myself in her shoes. How old? Then I get to understand certain things there. Then I come back. I say, now, let's make it way. Now I understand this one. And when, when you begin to understand it, I understand you. They want to listen to what I'm trying to say. Right. But be that as it may, I still leave you. I'm, I'm only trying to like, Look at, look at what you're trying to do, wholesomely. Look at some totality of the decision you're trying to make. Uh, the possibilities are this, 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 this. But I will not deny the fact that you could be right too. So I leave you to make your decision and leave your decision. And I'm standing back, praying to God that God help me, that you will not hit the edge that I will be able to catch him or mm. I will be able to catch her. And uh, it has come out well, Jesus' name. Lovely pops. Um, courtesy and confidence, fatherhood and stages. Um, these are these are some things that you just said, and I think it's ext extremely important and are words of wisdom. Um, wanted to continue this in this line of thought. I remember that when I became a father, um, you know, it was quite surreal. Uh, Ari was born, and we were in the UK, and Kemi was out of it, and they just literally handed. Ari to me, you know, in the States, they take the baby away. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't do that. They just gave her to me and Kemi was out because she'd been through a lot. And I was just with my child. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, especially more, I think when Azariah was born, the pressure of having a son, you know, um, I began to, 
um, examine myself, my strengths, my weaknesses, the, the, the realization that, you know, my life would be the first chapter of the story of his life, you know, him looking at me as the, you know, the totality of who I am to mold himself, you know, and to become this man, that responsibility was daunting. And I began to feel these sense questions of, am I adequate? Is this, am I worthy to do this? How is this going to be? Um, did you go through those moments when you first became a father? And um, what, what would you say your principle is in terms of fatherhood? Um, <clears throat> um, did I go through the same emotions? And Oh, yes, I did. I, let me say this. I would sit back and look at two folks at a time. Uh, first thing was to do. Yeah. I was, God, how do you handle this? You mean, this girl would grow up to a place where she's able to understand life, I mean, read and uh, uh, get to a place where she would make bad decisions. And I, so I don't know, man, what a task. But immediately, God would come and kind of tell me that, hey, your father didn't fail. You will not fail. Mm. The processes actually belong to him. At best, you're a caretaker. Mm. So, that gave me a lot of rest. Mm. And of course, God teaching me that life evolves. That you follow me. In fact, I will ask questions. I said, I need to keep life. How to how to sustain their life, keep their life That's God's that's God's duty. And the earlier you began to realize that, the earlier you began to like um, live what is God's to God to do. And as for grace and ability to be able to fully outside of the deal. Yeah, and that was what happened and I did very well. What, what, the second question again, second part of that question. And then I said, um, what would you um, say your guiding principles are in oh, fatherhood? Guiding, oh, the guiding principles, yeah. I mean, well, I think I started touching on this, actually. My guiding principles were like, well, my father did it well. And see, in advertent, if you see me doing exactly what my father must have done in his time, and I'll come to that in a minute. Children learn by what they see. And they don't know when they are learning when they are learning. Um, like I said, uh, I thought, my father succeeded, I succeeded. So what did he do? My father always prayed. In the morning, so I went out there and prayed. God, my father had a way of talking to God, and God was answering him, man. So God may answer me. Uh -huh. Most of you know my history. You guys are quite privileged. You are few. I thank God for that. And um, God has been good to me. My dad wasn't this blessed financially like I, mean, like, like I am today. And my, God, my dad was blessed with children. I mean, you know the story. You know all your uncles and their parties. Mm, mm. And uh, how he came through only then he made me believe that, look, no matter how feeble, no matter how simple a prayer is to God, He answers. He don't answer exactly the way you want it, but He will answer in the way that He knows will best work for you. And that has worked for us. So that guided me in life. And um, I always expect that things will go well in Jesus' name. Sometimes they go wrong. But when they go wrong, He comes in to help me get right. Um, and that, that was it. So it's it's um, realizing that, like you said, that we're just caretakers. It's God's responsibility. Um, we're just caretakers to guide them in the right direction. And yeah. your guiding principle is depending on God and praying like you saw your father do. Um, and like I said, when you tell us about your stories. And knowing fully well that, so that? Knowing fully well that things will come out true. I mean, knowing that God is handling it, I am positive that it will come out better than even I'm thinking. And God has been good. Amen. Um, let's, 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 let's take it a step further, Dad. So I, I want to pick your brain. What's it like, you know, you have different children. Yeah. I mean, Tolu, myself, Toby, and then you have Tim Tim and Jom Jom. Um, we're all uniquely different. Let's, let's start with Tolu and, and, and Toby and I first, you know, as we came about to completely different in our expressions um yeah. our, 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 our thought process our, our expressions were completely different um you know what's it like and i could talk about myself you know i know i've always been um a handful even from from growing up you know from me having a pencil stuck in my eye to busting my head on the against the door to busting my head against the railing 
to uh, running towards the express when he took me to the hospital to so because I, I knew it was an injection. To be, I mean, it's, I've, I've always been, I've been, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> I've been a lot. So, what's it like for you, um, fathering, you know, us and in, in, you know, in the different expressions? And now you have Tim Tim and Jom Jom. Do you think that the way you fathers us is slightly different from how you're fathering them now? Um, well, yes, you, you, you put it right. See, every child is unique and uniquely different. And um, what well, you take everyone the way they evolve. For example, when I look at you, I see a picture from home, but I see a lot of me. Uh, so right. when, 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 when you get sometimes, permit me to use it, this word in a, in a good way, when you start to throw your pranks as a child, and I'm like, uh, I said, well, man, you did that too. So I, <laughs> I just back off. And I said, no, 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 no. And when your mom said, look, I said, don't worry, you'll be okay. Said, come here, come here. Now, that wasn't to say that I wasn't, I mean, spanking you. I mean, you know, I did quite a lot. Remember the day we were coming from church, I guess you were around four or five. And you were in a conversation with your sister, I think, um, told you then, Toby wasn't talking then, or smaller. And he said to you, say, you guys were talking. And you knew I was here, I was driving. And he said, see, daddy just liked to, he likes to spank me, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but I know why he spanked me. Because he wants to be a good man. <laughs> I just smiled. I pretended as if I wasn't hearing you guys. And that was true, you know. <laughs> and uh, the only thing you did say, <laughs> Was I don't know why I wasn't spanking you like he was spanking me because you are different from Tolu. I want, I want very strong aspect of father's love is to be able to chastise a child. And chastisement means not to hurt a child but to correct a child and to, for the child to know that look, my father is correcting me. It's not because he hates me. It's not because he dislikes me. It's because he wants me to prosper. He wants me to do well in life, and that's why he's kind of from angry at this point with me and the spanking yeah which of course i, I got with you so now you're looking different i mean and by the grace of god you want to see the different child straight you want to see what they're strong at and what they're weak at so you want to help them get better in, in, in the areas of weaknesses and where they're strong you want to kind of push them forward and encourage them to go i mean keep on going i mean like the girls i'm wonderfully strongly for example that um i will not allow any of my daughters to get married and become honest and become a prisoner in, in a marriage, I will not. I will not. And so I train them not to be like that. Mm. Because it's part of our African culture. I train them to be very respectful to their husband. Mm. Oh, yes. Because that is needed. But at the same time, I train them to come on, be ambitious, see opportunities. You know that you are not limited because God has not limited you. Be an enhancement to your husband and your home. Move forward and move people forward. And if you observe, many people will say, Fountain has a crop of strong women. I believe so. And you've heard me say that in the pulpit too, that lady, like, women, listen to me. I want for you to get married. But please, find your niche in life. Be who you want to be. Begin to be who you want to be before you turn to the marriage. Because it's what your husband meets that he will respect. Mm. It's what your husband yeah. meets that he'll respect. Oh, yeah. And so while you get there, while you're adjusting to your husband, he's adjusting to you. But let this be, let this be the things that he will see about you that will like, bring you have to be, I mean, to adjust to. And so every one of you is your neck. For example, look at you. I mean, uh, one of the brightest results in the NBA from the US. And he came and said, no, you I said, oh, my goodness. All right. Mm -hmm. And you know, we had some good talk. And I like, <laughs> that's what you like to do. Ah. So, and I, I have no regret. I'm grateful to God that I allowed you at least explore the opportunities and, of course, your abilities in this area. And I believe, God, that uh, there's no limit on your life. And you're doing that, and yet your Christian testimony is distracting. And, of course, you are sure of the fact that you are called to be a minister. So, hey, be a minister everywhere you are. So, different from Tolu. Tolu is a professional, yet when he goes to ministry, he's like, hey, all right, yeah. at least, like, oh. And I'm, I'm glad that she's who she is. And I know that she has a whole future before her in Jesus' name. 
to be is totally different to be collaborative and, and academia. So I see your mom in all of you, I see me in all of you. And when you are behaving like a mom, I know I know from a distance. When you're behaving like I know from a distance. And when the hybrid is showing somebody else, I know from a distance. But above all, I see the grace of God on all your lives. And that's how I handle the people in the church too. I don't believe there's any woman, human being that is not purposeful in life, that's not people with purpose of that in life. And there's no human being that can attain to what God wants you to attain in life. And so it's easy. So now, asking whether the way I handled you guys is the way I handled this other two, slightly different. And I tell mm. you what, I didn't have to look for an iPad or a tablet in your time, but now I have to look for an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't badly <laughs> with the feel that I have an adequate Wi-Fi at home during your time. And now I have to. Um, now they take lectures online. Oh my goodness. I'm like, okay. Uh, there are some things I'm yet to handle, know how to handle internet wise. They handle them, they just come. I'm like, wow, okay. So you can imagine I have to adapt, I have to become teachable too. Maybe really teach me certain things so I can really help them adequately uh, the way they need to be helped. Um, so it's slightly different, and their generation is different. Honest, their generation is almost the generation of your own children. So, right. you can, uh -huh. so you can imagine when I go to a parent teachers association. Oh yeah. So when I see their fathers, you look at GBC. <laughs> 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 so well, it's good that it keeps you. That it keeps you. Uh, it, yeah. it, it, it keeps you young. It keeps you oh, young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, as far as that's that's my dad, man. So he said, hey, daddy, I said, yeah. hey, So what those young guys are doing, I want to do. And sometimes they say, come to a meter house, and they want to play straight. No, I don't run, though, because if I run, I'll beat them. You know? Most of them are people. We are money now. <laughs> yeah, but I wouldn't do that, you know. But I just kind of, yeah, I can run, I can run. He said, daddy, go run and beat them. I said, don't worry, we'll do it some other time, you know, wisdom. <laughs> but yeah, slightly different. Dad, you're very athletic. <laughs> I'm sure you can probably dribble all of them in soccer. And I never well, knew that soccer gene. You still have it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's awesome, Pops. Um, let's, let's continue the conversation. So, growing up with, with mom, um, you know, um, I watched you. I think, you know, a lot of times we talk about how one of the things I realized in, you know, fatherhood and even with parenting, kids learn more by what they see versus what yeah. is said to them. Yes, you know, um, there are lots of things that, that, that you learn. And so growing up watching you and mom, um, I saw a man who loved his wife to the fullest, uh, to the fullest capacity. Um, you allowed her to be the fullest expression of herself. Um, you pushed her to be the best. You supported her. You never saw her as your competition, but as your extension in everything that you did. You wanted her to be the best. Uh, and you were wholeheartedly um, behind her. Um, which that's how my ideology, you know, I form my ideology and that's how I am with my wife. That's how, you know, talk about equality, supporting women, letting them be expression of your wife. When I, come to, I saw that all from the relationship you had with mom. Um, where did that come from for you? Um, and why do you think it's important for every uh, man to treat his wife that way? Again, you see, you hit the nail on the head. You already answered the question. And the answer is this, a child is better taught by what you do than what you say. You know, so there's a quote I found preparing for Father's Day and it says, we teach our children when we don't know that we're teaching them. We say things, mm. we do things, we respond to situations, we react to certain things. And all this put together, your child is watching. You don't even know that they are watching. Mm. And given the same circumstance, even at their level, they will react exactly the way that you are reacting. You can now imagine when they become adults. So the only school they've gone in handling a woman is your marriage. Mm. So I saw my dad doing that, actually. I, I mean, I never one day, one day, and I mean it, and God bless me with this, I never saw my dad lift up a hand against me. And there were no legislation in those yeah, no legislation in, in those days against such things. So it wasn't because of the law or anything. It was just a gentleman and a God fearing person mm. who truly, truly loved his wife. And uh, I couldn't but do the same 
And uh, if the saying that you want to chat is better than you is anything to go by, I think God gave me grace there. And I believe sin for me, Jesus is going to be better than me in that area in Jesus' name. And so, mm. yeah. So talk about pushing her to be the best. Come on, look at it. The Bible says that the woman is a helper. Mm. Don't you think that um, the help you get from your helper is seriously dependent on how prepared, how fully formed, how studied, how good, how adequately, how, how available to help that your helper is. So if you have a weak right. pain for a helper, you are weak. The day you need help, that's the end. Mm. So mm. whatever your wife has grace for, why don't you support her? Number one, you'll be glorifying mm. God. Because God expects me as a husband, he said, hey, he said, cherish and nourish that woman in such a way that when God comes looking, You'll be giving God something better than God gave you. So I believe that mm. the man has the capacity to bring the best out of a woman. And that's kind of that's why I'm fond of all these women around. It's pretty easy with me to say, hey, how you doing? And the woman just will, ah, I can go for life. It's just the way God has made me. And most of them say, You're full of encouragement. If I don't encourage you, what do I do? I discourage you or no? And so that's what I've done with my wife. I mean, I did with my wife, and I'm doing with my wife. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at them. Mm -hmm. What? Hey, child psychology, child teacher, educationist. Hey, today she's standing on certain platforms, and she's just starting. Right. Of God. And that's why I expect that any young man would do with his wife. You're building yourself up. You are building the future of your children. You are building your future. And that's why I do what I do. And God has been good. Wow. Wow. And I know you do better than me. Said if it's just... Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, and, amen. And, 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 still on, and, still, and still on that line of questioning, I mean, something that you said, you said, if you don't empower your helper, when you need, when you need her, she'll be weak. If you weaken her, she'll be weak, which is, which is very, very, very profound. Um, Still going on that on that line of reasoning, like I said, every, everything that I learned, you know, um, I learned from having you as a as a positive father figure. Um, you know, like you said, same you said of your father. Never once did I ever see you raise your hand to mom. Never once did I see you demean her. Never once did I see you disrespect her. You know, and so I mean, I I saw that, and that kind of shaped my mindset and my framework on how to treat your 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 wife you know your spouse with that respect and to support and not to be intimidated by her so what do you say for those people who those men who grew up in a home and didn't have the privilege of having a positive uh uh father figure or role model and now they've been thrust into this position of of being a father and they're trying to do better but they have no reference point you know i i, I have a reference point so it makes things easy you know but what do you say to those who don't who didn't have that or, or might have had, but they were negative or they were a bad father uh, figure. What do you say to them? How do they handle that and fatherhood? You know, the thing about the spirit of God is this. It's the spirit of restoration and it allows you to reinvent yourself. That's why the Bible says, we, um, if a man be found in Christ, is a new creation. So what's right. great about the new creation and that new creation will mean, if we let it go into studying it, it's a, a new species that has never existed before. So here was this mm. man, a criminal, a crook, a murderer, now coming in contact with Jesus Christ, and then mm. getting convinced, and then convicted, and then accepting the love of Christ, giving his life to Jesus, he rises up from there a different person altogether. Now, so what's the change there? What's the change factor? Jesus. So no matter how horrible your past is, no matter how dysfunctional your home was, no matter how much lack of father figure you, you, you had, as a Christian, there is a, there's a father figure ultimately standing over you. Check the Bible. Mm. Now, 
the mm. Bible does not say that this is for women, this is for men. It says, hey, the day you begin to give your life to Jesus, that the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, Romans chapter 1. I mean, he deposits his nature there. And look at First Corinthians, I think, in chapter, chapter 14, yes, talking about love. Uh, yes. 13? Yeah, 13, sorry. Talking about love. First Corinthians 13, yes. He said, love is kind. Love is gentle. The love is not suffering. Doesn't account evil. Now, I'm not even talking marriage, I'm talking of you. Character-wise, the new you, the new man, which of course will reflect in your marriage, in your home, in every of your relationship. So for those men, I say, look, the Bible is enough, the fact that you are a Christian is enough, I mean, it's the beginning of that. Get into your Bible, or receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, and get into the Bible. Please take the Bible seriously. Never mind anybody. Everybody has a source of power. I tell men, I come from men. I say, you see everybody bragging and jumping on the street, jumping, hey, come here, what's your secret? How many of them truly say this? By the time you dig deep into them and they see you, you can't be, you can't be, you can't be stopped. They say, okay, can you bear it when I show you? And most of them are in the court. But the truth is this, which court can stand the power of the blood of Jesus? Which come court? On. Mm. And so I believe that the beginning for such people is to give their lives to Jesus and get into a good fellowship with him. Number two, father figures are everywhere. Come on. If you're in the church, we are the man, the called man, is following the tenets of the Bible and is aspiring to be like Jesus. And we become like a father figure to many. For example, in fountain, you know, many people came, many people have come in and they're still coming. Who never knew their fathers. That mm. they're standing, they are worthy husbands and fathers. So, Father Figo, Jesus, and probably through Pastor Tai or any of the pastors in the church or any of the men in the church that they're able to relate with. After all, it is the coming you keep that produce you. If that works the wise of the wise. The man that is blessed. Does not work in the castle of the godly or oh, he's the light is the light. Light. and there in the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Bible, he meditates day and night. Come on, you'll be you'll be better than your great grandfather. Mm. And your grandfather and father all put together. You'll be like mm. Jesus. So what do I advise them? Come on, follow the follow this absolute Bible. And father figures are everywhere. If you can get close to them, very well. If you cannot, come on. Get mentored from a distance. Just aspire to be like that man. And God will give you grace. You'll be, super. you'll be better than that man. And when you say, Pastor, Pastor Taiwan will be like you. I say, yeah. You'll be better in Jesus' name. And man, I've seen grace. I've seen people, man. I've seen pastors. I've seen pastors become the best of mothers today. Over the past 25, 28 years. Oh, oh my God. I've seen wicked, oh my goodness, people you never expected can, be, can make anything good in life. I've seen them become the best husband and fathers that you can find anywhere. Mm. The grace of God, the sacrifice of Calvary, Jesus mm. Christ. Mm. So I tell people, I say, I'll show you the secret of my power. Come, show them in the Bible the love of Christ, and show them the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It makes a difference. Mm. Wow. Awesome, Pops. Um, uh, you're dropping a, a, a lot of nuggets, and I know that a lot of people that are, I can see from the comments, a lot of people are, are being blessed by the wisdom and the insight that, that is coming from our conversation. And I'm really happy that we're having this, this, this conversation. Um, I want, want to ask you another question, Dad. So, you know, in today's society, I think one of the, there are a lot of pressures on, 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 on men. And I think one of the metrics or the measuring metrics to being a good father, apart from, you know, um, you know, your character is, is, is your ability to provide. You know, I think if you look at gender roles, you know, if you're looking at traditional gender roles, the man is meant to provide. So there's lots of pressure for men, you know, as fathers to provide for their families, you know, for their wives, for their children, um, you know. 
how do you balance how would you suggest a man a young father you know young man balance you know because sometimes providing for your family means long hours spent away from the family you know and you know it's very important to be present in your in, in your family's life how do you balance how do you suggest the balance between trying to provide and being present as as, as a father in the home um um again this is one of the reasons many young people join the world. One they want to belong to, and they believe that that's where they find help amongst their peers. Mm. But they don't have to do that. They have a greater court, like I said, like I said, and quote, Christianity. Let them come back home. In Matthew, I think, chapter 6, where Jesus was speaking, verse 33, it says, your father knows that you have need of all these things. So it begins with, look, I am going through this. I need this. I need this. I'm not looking for it for any reason than to get my family adequate provision. So take it to him in prayer. And the Bible says when you are courageous, Proverbs chapter 3, he said he will direct your parts. When you are courageous, you will always mm. direct your parts. And he will never leave you in the parts of failure. Never. I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm still going to talk about it. Um, let me talk of my dad. Okay? I said it in uh, the Father's Day prayer. I'm sorry, uh, Sam. My dad retired as a chief clerk. So my dad never bought a car. Mm. And that wasn't because he didn't have friends that bought cars. Mm. He could not afford it. Mm. Uh, he had a bicycle. <laughs> and uh, as we grew older, we wouldn't really let him enjoy it. Sneak the bicycle and go ride. He <laughs> um, was blessed with many children. Uh, well, I'm tired. I have a twin sister. My little younger one was a triplet. So two pregnancies gave my mom five children. I'm in this. I'm in this. So we got ten for a clock. So mm. which meant that my mom could not work. So which meant that my dad must have to work extra. He did, but how much extra could he work? And that, again, that is bringing me to a place where perhaps that the little that righteous man has that is committed to God will cater for his needs. Hmm. Now, I will say that the ten of us today, by the grace of God, there's no illiterate. Hmm. Now, and that's what has produced what we are seeing today. A clerk. You know, when I worked with government as, um, as a public sector petroleum engineer, this is working in NBC. And when I described what the clerk earned, which of today is much more than what they earned, but then recently the clerk salary to what I was earning as a fresh graduate at the time, I was like, you mean that was a color salary by daddy God? How did he do it? I knew he struggled though. And yet we still had the family rapport. We had fellowship. So much so that when my dad would struggle to pay fees at the time, my civil school fees, I was pulling the north, most of them was pulling the south, and south was pretty expensive. He would write an overdraft check and give it to me. He said, please go give it and with a letter sealed. He said, ask for the bank manager, his bank, I will go, I will I mean, I will wrong. Can a job <laughs> too much to the bank? I mean, I'll be praying along the way. I said, God, please, you mercy. This man, as early as secondary school, I knew how to, you know, be responsible, feeling for my dad, because he explained everything to me. So I'll pray along and I'll get there, give the letter, and I'll sit back waiting. I'll be praying, God, let this man just show mercy. And he said, Hi, is Papa. Tell him everything's fine. Tell him, please give him this and then overdraft. So daddy will give, use overdraft to pay school fees. And he will explain to me that it will take me three months to uh, to pay up. Mm. And this three months, another term. And that was how daddy was paying school fees. Mm. So why am I going to advise people? 
I said, please, seize opportunities, okay? Be ambitious. But don't be inordinately ambitious. Don't struggle. Don't struggle to be anybody. Our assignments in life are not the same. The fact that everybody is driving the latest messages based today does not mean I should now get an overdraft to buy messages. No, 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 no. I will write what I have. Mm. So the question I asked myself usually when I was growing up is this, what am I impressing? Number one, priority wise, mm. impress God. Number two, impress your wife. Number three, impress your children. Number four, then impress your extended family. Number five, your community. Huh? And you see how God enlarge your circle of influence. So what I do, I mean, you want to ask me the question or the reason why I didn't send you to American International? It was there when we were growing up. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> but today, we understand you stand. Some of you stand on a higher platform than them. And I know of people who have come to church. Remember those boys with people running the bridge? Right. And we sent put them in the home in the ocean, in the Kuru, send them to public school and they send them. Some of them went to university, some of them are brought to them. They came from nowhere. So number one, trust God. Number two, mm. please, if you are going to impress, first your wife, your children, and then yeah. Don't compete with anybody. God mm. compete your size. Don't spend your money on luxury stuff. You'll just be using money to pay luxury tax. In other words, today if I say, if I'm, uh, give me a name. What are the brand names? Uh, well, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, <laughs> From Boutiga, I produce this pen. <laughs> then everybody rushes it. Blanc. Everybody rushes it. Whoa. Then in three months time, I change this one to gold, gold color. Then they rush it again. You are making me rich to the detriment of your own assignment and your people. Because you must be able, you want your friends to say, hey, he's a rich man. Hey, he's, I mean, he's, he's an imam. No, he's, he's, he's a fashionable man. What does that do to me? The truth is that the whole world becomes to respect my stand and my focus in no time. And so that's the way I will advise, or that's why I will advise young fathers. Trust God. Be hardworking. And watch God. Do things that will blow your mind. Indeed. Wow. But don't be too hardworking. Find time for a while, my children, please. Mm. If it's Sunday, like the only church. Uh -huh. Please, be Sunday away. Away from work. Your wife and children go to church and hang around together. It's fantastic. You would like better than the person that works double job, Sunday to seven days a week. And one, their health will fail after a while, God forbid. Number two, they have a relationship with their children. And their wife. Number two, number two, number two, rather, they have problems with their wives. Number three, they have a relationship with their children as they grow up. So, what you use? Mm. So, mm. it's balance. Mm. All right, Pop. So, growing up, um, you know, you, you just told a bit about, you know, um, growing up and your experience with your, you know, having to run to the bank and, all of that. And every time I hear you tell the story, it's just very humbling because, I mean, this is, this is where you came from. This is part of my, my story, you know. Um, it, 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 you know, I mean, we've, we've seen God, you know, I mean, from, you know, I tell people all the time when I'm talking to people, you know, one of the things, how you brought us up, you, you know, um, the importance of humility because you came from humble, humble beginnings. And that's one of the things that you instilled in all of us to be humble, never to look down on anybody. You know, I tell people all the time when I'm talking to them, I say, you know, um, my, 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 I tell people all the time that my, my, my father's, my grandfather never owned a car. My father would always tell me my grandfather never owned a car. He owned a bicycle his whole life. He had 10 children, you know, from the same woman, you know, uh, my, my father grew up in the North and it will be one of those kids that would have to walk to school, you know? I mean, these oh, yeah. things are things that you watch in Nollywood epic movies that I see or when I had to play these roles, <laughs> but this was your life. You know, you tell us about how you used to carry 
carry stuff on your head during the winter and you'd lose no. your hair and your neck. No, but you see, my parents didn't take us through that. My yes. parents left us, my uncle, when I yes. was six. My seven came in, then Pastor John, and then suddenly she was uh, 10, Pastor John was 8. And why? They were then being transferred to Yola on top of 1962. Right. 63, and they were not sure that um, 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 there were good schools there. So they left us not to disrupt our education. My uncle right. was the best that he could, he could, but his best was such that, man, as a six year old boy, I carry stuff on my head that my he, I became bald <laughs> at the center of my head. <laughs> After carrying stuff, I wasn't that tall. I would grow shorter. If you take this for me to grow. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we had fun. So much so that when uh, some 24 months later when my parents came back, nobody told us. We ran. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like I mean, I carried, I, I carried, I did this thing recently where I carried something on my head, and this is me as a grown man. I can't imagine a six-year-old boy having to carry stuff. Every on. weight, every weight that would make you shorter. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. I mean, now they came back. But then, Dad, even I remember you tell us stories and how even those times when you would go to school and you said and your classmates, you know, their fathers, they would drive their father's cars to, to school. They had the latest cars. They had the nice clothes. And you would always say to yourself, you know, at the end of the day, I believe that this is your father's car. This is your father's clothes. You and I are going to have to compete in this race of life. There was always this mental fortitude you had, even as a child growing up. You always had this sense of, of knowing that your life would be something and you would have purpose and you'd make impact growing up all through your life. Um, you know, I, I tried to, um, where did that come from? Was that something that your, did your father speak into? Because I mean, I, I tried to speak into my daughter and let her know, tell her she's the best, but your, that mental fortitude and attitude you always had, where did that come from? Again, again, I think it was the way we were brought up. Um, um, although within her, but my mom would cook, and we would all be hungry waiting. My, home, my mom would say, first give me that plate, give me that plate. She would cook and serve her neighbors. Ah! To serve the, the neighbors first? No, we serve the neighbors first. We will be hungry. So ah. I said, go and give this to my mom. So, so, so. And go and give this. I said, ah! <laughs> then she would then serve us. OK? We never liked it, but we blew up. Seeing that, oh no, my mom was sat the neighbor on the right, the on the left, the neighbor in front, the neighbor behind, and of them would be so happy. You see them sharing and eating and enjoying themselves. And when they cook too, they they sat the project. I mean, a sense of community. I mean, I mean, it was serious in those days. We didn't know, we didn't know them. There was no Muslim, no Christian. I mean, well, mm. I mean, okay. So my mom was like that, and so we saw that. So you don't have to be rich to be able to reach out to people. So we began to feel that you are part of a long chain. And if there's a weakness in the chain, it will invariably affect you. So you reach out to help people left and right. And, uh, and that's what, that, that's what I said from what we do in church, you know. Um, from the word go, we knew that we would touch people's lives. Apart from talking to them through the word, then we had to now bring things like... Uh, 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 social welfare. No, we started help ministries right from the first day that we opened church. Right. And all kinds of medicate, all kinds of things that we had started, which of course we never used to record. It didn't matter to us until now that the world is saying that the church is doing nothing because you just uh, nah, 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 nah. no. We didn't wait for anybody to tell us to do nothing. We've always been like that. Uh, and family, but that's why I found that we didn't come to church. So where did I find that? I found that with my parents. And uh, it just kind of grew up with me. And I always felt that I would just be a helper somewhere to somebody. That's so how, so in terms of your mental fortitude, like just always oh, knowing yes, that. Let, yeah, let me address that, yes. Um, I realized that, um, yeah, it's cool, that's right. Um, I happened to go to a very good school, St. Paul's College. I don't want to go to all that details. And then um, a lot of, Good people came to my school. I went through my school at the time. That's the 
uh, Musa Sazali had the first time become mission in the north. Like, Gomo's father was the past when the pastor when I was from two old men and he went to you know, pastor now. So we had a lot of um, influential people whose children attended this school. We had military leaders, we had um, um, civil servants, we had to have um, ambassadors, we had we had, we had, we had uh, that we were privileged to be part of the school. Virtual, well, come see them, read, read. So, you know, when our parents were able to go, my, again, we were pushed by our parents. So, I was there. So, my, my friends were quite influential. A number of them were, I remember we went from four, they had about one of my friends who bring Lysia Beta into school, and that was the latest at the time. But none of my lecturers had anything. I mean, the best of my lecturers had a beat <laughs> at the time. Oh, I had a so, beat till then. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And then you cry to that. Ah. Yeah. That, so, yeah. What year? What, what year was this? A Beetle then? Oh yes, and the secondary school lecturer, 1973, 1972. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, um, so life was like that. But I would just think to myself, hey, we're going to write the same examinations anyway. <laughs> so we're going to contest and compete in the same world. Yeah. So yeah, your dad is the head of state. Your dad is the Central Bank of Asia. Your dad is the Federal Commissioner. We have Mr. the Federal Commissioner for the East. Your dad is the ambassador to this. Excellent. I'm privileged to have you as my mates. And if anything, it helped me to improve myself. The exposures they had, I learned, I acquired from them. I didn't have the opportunity. I did. Right. I was never in this. Of, no, 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 no. But I admired good things from people. So I began to be like them in terms of exposure. But where I wasn't like them was in terms of character. Mm. I couldn't afford to do that. And, uh, I always remember where I'm coming from. Right. And um, so I would say to myself, well, so we're going to write some exams. No so, problems. What did I know is that I would do well. And I did well. At the time, the segregation I started in Nigeria, because after I graduated, I could not afford anything else. It was amazing. I did well. I had a good grade. In those days, we made a grade one. Oh my goodness! But I couldn't. I couldn't get a school to get into because I wasn't a northerner. And my dad yeah. wasn't a northerner. Haven't lived all his life there. We were born there. We couldn't. And that's one of the things that I think Nigeria has to change. You can. You should be able to own the state you were born in. That's when the real integration will happen in this country. But that's by the way. So. By the time I couldn't get into any school, my mates that didn't, that didn't make GC were going into SBS and were doing one year to convert. My dad said, hey, now pick your luggage, head down south, go and complete in the south. That was, that was the last time I lived in the north. I visited a number of times, but that was when I started living in the south. Came to wow. my father's school in the Bible, and that was the interest of history. Wow. But I'm always sure that, look, my future was good. If there's anything we need to teach our young ones today, is to be positive in life. If you really, really are a good parent, you should be looking for looking forward to your children being better than you in life. So you just have to be positive. In the areas of your strength, there should be an improvement. In the areas of your weakness, they should be, I mean, you should overcome them. You know? so, mm. so when did I start to acquire that? By just seeing my friends, so privileged. Mm. Okay, Dad. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the time. It's almost been an hour. I don't, I don't, I don't know where the time has gone. It's been an um, amazing conversation. I think I have like one or two more questions. I remember on your Father's Day message, you spoke about covering the shame um, of your father. That was one of the things you, you talked about, you know, important to cover the shame of you know, of, of your father. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Why why is that important yes. to children? Yes. What, yes. what exactly does that mean? And yeah. Yes. Well, I wasn't actually making a reference to a biological father, but then, right. so what was the shame of my biological father? He had no, he didn't have the kind of money to, 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 to throw around that. He had to, he had to be taken or uh, overdraft to send his children to school. So, I mean, and I knew. And they're like, man, I just kept on praying for my dad. I kept on praying for my dad. So much so one day that my dad, my dad sent somebody, someone was traveling to Pazaria. He sent someone to give me some money. They gave me the money. Come into class, gave me the money. I had the money, I started crying. 
Because I did mm. my thing. I was like, why should you bother about me? For goodness sake. You know? Okay. Now, what I mean by that is this. Because I hear a lot from the, 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 your, your generation, particularly, and, uh, in the ministry, more so. Uh, they're not so um, comfortable with relating to fathers, these older mm. men in the ministry. Most of mm. them that um, they will box you and they stifle you. No, I don't believe so. It depends on the way you carry yourself. It depends on the way you get into that relationship. Like I said, we balance constant confidence any day, any time. I don't believe any man can box you or pocket you. I don't believe so. Not for any reason, because I know what God has done in our lives, which is in your life too. So, covering the shame, I brought up the example of Noah, as it were. Right. You see, Noah was a man. When the whole world was gone astray, he stood out. God, even God, attested to that fact. And see what happened. After building the ark in the to God and saved his entire family, his children and their families, he was such a responsible character. Then he planted my ear. And then he made some wine. And then he got drunk on his own wine. And then he fell and he was naked on the, on the ground. Then his youngest son, um, Ham, yeah. saw him, happened to be the first one to see him. He went back in a mockery, went to call his friend, his elder, his elder brothers, said, come and look at your dad. And he was laughing, jeering and making a mockery of him. Now, how do I tackle that? The best of man is man at best. Every man, no matter who they are, have their weaknesses. And what Every man has their what, sir? Their own weaknesses. Their weaknesses. Dad, okay, so... I, I, I want to I, I want to interject there for a second, if you don't mind. It's counting okay. me down. I have a minute and twenty eight seconds. Okay. So I want us to end it here. I'll yeah. call back. I'm going to come back. So everybody, come back, and we're going to round up. So we'll finish this conversation. So it okay. doesn't. So I don't want us to kick us out. So right. every man has their weaknesses. That's yeah. where we end it. I'm going to end this chat, guys, and then I'm, we're going to come back to to continue the, to finish it up as we round up so we don't okay. miss this point. Okay, Dad. So I'll All see right. you here in a second. All right. Oh. You're talking about Noah and Ham seeing his father when, you know, after the flood, he got drunk. And you were saying that the best of man is man. Yeah, the best of man is man at best. Yes. And that's to say that every man has a weakness. Right. Uh -huh. And so Noah's weakness was exposed. The man that was so beautiful with God, so blameless, to that his generation saved a whole, in fact, saved the next life on earth. Now was overtaken by his own weakness. He got drunk and he became, you know, drunk into stupor. He was fallen, he was on the ground, I mean, naked. So his son saw him and he was amused. He went to laughing and then jeering and yelling. I'm sorry, jelling and laughing and went to call his two elder brothers, come see some things. So for him, it was hilarious, it was fun. But when they discovered what he was calling them to, the two of them took, I mean, kind of some big clothes and came with their backs on both sides to cover the shame of their fathers. Right. So my, 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 my thinking is this. When a child is well grown and is grown up, he will get to a place where he will discover that his father is not invisible after all. Hmm. When a child is growing, you think your father is God. But hmm. as you grow older, you become to realize, begin to realize that he's a man after all. Hmm. So in that wise, what do you do when you begin to discover the weaknesses of your father? Hmm. It's that with time to now say no, kill him for his weaknesses. Or you want to forget all the foundations and all the processes of growth that has brought you to where you are. Mm. He had them then too. But he's been struggling with his life with them. So the least you can do is to see how you can help him overcome now that you are discovering that, that look, that we're going to work on this. We're going to overcome this. So this generation should not be the generation that like, because some of these fathers are this, hey, 
no, let's be big generation that could kick up as the shame of our fathers. Mm. But let's be, let's be mature enough to know that no man can pocket you. Mm. Because at the end of the day, the principle of the kingdom, which I believe that the very, very foundation of God's kingdom is built upon, is cause and effect. Seed and harvest. What you sow, you will reap. Mm. We were youth some 30 years ago. Some 35, 30 years we were youths. We were like you guys. Mm. Yeah, we are. And God giving us longer life. We'll be here when you guys will be like us. And then we'll see you guys struggling with the most <laughs> That's right. All right. And so one of the reasons why you see certain things for certain people later in life, they're living in the harvest of their daily lives. They're living so in the harvest of what? Harvest of their early lives. Mm. Their twilight lives, their twilight is only the harvest of what? At their usual stage. So my advice is this. Some fathers can be mean. Some fathers are, I mean, are fought with weaknesses that you will not believe it. But God is still using them. The least you can do, cover their shame, pray for them, and make up your mind, I will not be affected by that. Mm. I will get the best of his virtues, but not that. Because I, I, at least I'm expected to be an improvement of him anyway. Mm. So wait, let's, let's be a generation that covers the shame for fathers. Mm. That's so good seeds for our future. Mm. A generation that are confident of who we are, God has made us. How beautiful through that maturity. A generation that can talk to daddy, I don't understand this. I hear this. I see this about you. Sir, they will respect you the more. They don't have to agree with you. Mm. So that's exactly what I mean. Fathers too, wow. do cry. Fathers too, do have their weaknesses. They have their fears. Mm. Let, then let's, 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 let's talk about that. You just said fathers to have their their fears. Do you want to kind of shed a bit like a, a bit a bit more light on that? What would you say the fears of of, of fathers? When we say fathers well, to have their fears. What do you mean? Well, well, basically, look at this from counseling and from what um, as a man that by God's grace deal with men's issues. Uh, most men don't realize that in that in life. That there will come a time when the children will be adults enough to discern certain things. So it's good for you to be upfront with them right from their youth. Mm. It's good to be upfront right from their youth. It's very, very important. Like I said, my dad he said, please pray as you go. Do this. So I will do that quickly. And, uh, I pray for my dad, so I knew I didn't expect my dad to have all the money in life. But God, in His infinite mercy, will always have mercy on him and God's going through. So uh, they don't really realize that. And so when the children begin to grow up and they begin to leave, there's that fear of, oh my God. But when they discover, they're like, oh my God, I've supported him, I've supported her. And when they begin to leave, and usually, when they see the privilege of their mom being alive and the man being alive, the children, whether we like it or not, the children have a way with their mothers. <laughs> so the man now begins to be afraid of being lonely. Of being lonely? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, he's lonely. And he's afraid that the older he becomes, the lonelier he's going to become. He's afraid of the, great, the, the, the greater future. That if uh, things are looking this way, I scarcely hear from this guy, I scarcely hear from this girl. And their mom talks about them, they talk all the time. And they don't even call me. I try to call them. Oh, they are very busy. Oh, yeah. Uh, after a while, it's like, man, does it worth it? Be honest, it's worth it. That's what it fights like. We raise giants. And be grateful to God for, for what He has used you for. So, men do have their fears. One of the pain of their of blacks abroad these days because of the Western world. They're so strong and they can't carefree. And they just pregnant women all over the place. The women are left with the children. 
they strive, they educate themselves, they go to school, they become professionals. So all sons and daughters just know their mouth. The men are moving from place to place, rolling stones. And at the end of the day, the children are kind of bonding with their mothers. And when they are gone, they are thinking of their mothers. The man is a loner. So most of them died lonely. They died for right. the time of it. And that's why at this time in the, your life, I mean, in the youth life, please bond with your wife and your children. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But uh, do, do you think that society has kind of played a role when it comes to toxic masculinity? Because growing up, especially in Africa, in the West, in this part of the world, you know, um, you, you know, they tell real men don't show emotions and, and, and men don't cry and men don't express. So you have lots of times when people have pictures of their fathers, they have these men who don't really, uh, express themselves. They don't show emotions. They keep a lot of things bottled in because, you know, that's how they, you show the strength of a man is to be always controlled under pressure. You never talk. So a lot of people die with a lot of things on the inside. So here they are growing, thinking that their fathers don't need conversation and, they don't, because the, the mothers are the ones that show the emotions, and the mothers are the ones they have conversations with. The mothers are always out going. The dads are the ones that, when daddy comes, they but just kind of, you know, is rigid and sits up, and that's kind of like that African uh, tradition. I mean, we, we were we were lucky. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, the way we grew up, that's not how we grew up. I mean, I I call you pops, and people don't understand that, you know, pops is not a thing of disrespect. That's a thing of endearment. I, I, I don't I don't I mean, I call you sir, but I don't say I say, yes sir, yes sir. I don't do that to you because of, I'm being disrespectful, but because we have that relationship or friendship and respect, you know. Um, but most people didn't grow up in that dynamic, so they don't feel like their fathers need, uh, you know love and affection if you will that they're just they feel like dads are just robots and strong you know and so to hear you know say that men have those fears of being lonely um how do you think that you know seeing how society has painted men to be what it means to be a man how do we in this generation hearing what you said now bridge that gap you know if i grew up in a house where my father was very you know and now his life is happening. I'm older. I have I've, I've left. You know how do I bridge that gap? And how do I yeah. touch again, again, that? again? Like I said, let's go back to the basic of uh, basic definition of Christianity. If any man be in Christ, in the creation, all things are possible. Mm. No, you see, you become as tender as Jesus is. You become as compassionate as Jesus is, and that will affect every of your relationship. Right. Even even with your even with your enemies, if you do have one, or any, if we do have some other. Uh, so it's pretty easy for such young men who are now Christians to reach out to their fathers who were no challenge at the time. Mm -hmm. Who right now are praying that God just send a helper somewhere. I think uh, the Christian virtues are what we can fall back on as much as Why? Well. You want to be the total person, the total man in Christ that he has made you. So you are able to get your acts together, love God with all your hearts and with all your soul and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So even your dad will fall into the category of your demons. In fact, God will even God God be talking talking your heart that hey, take care of that man man. He's suffering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how do we do that? How do we take up? Make sure that we're able to go back and then how do we prevent it from happening? Now we are my father fear that we don't fear. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reach my son. I'm gonna let him know. Because hey, Azariah, how old is he now? He's, he's almost two. He's a, he's a year and maybe eight months. Ex excellent. So, in 23 years' time, by the grace of God, man, as I, as I say, pops. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And the spirit is so, so close. Yeah. And so, it's good now to embrace I mean, wholesome development, nurturing the fear of the Lord, and making them be uh, compassionate, and making them be strong at the same time. God fearing, and. Uh, relationship uh, honoring and um, the future can only be better than what we have today by God's grace. Mm. So for so for those hearing, I mean, you know, like you said, fathers have their faith, so we need to make sure we're intentional about reaching out, oh, yeah. communicating, touching base. Because a lot of times I realize that we we take we take, you know, our parents for granted and it's this this idea that they'll always be there. You know, we it just you know uh, and then until you, and until life happens, there's that realization that tomorrow is a promise. I mean, you know, you know. I mean, with with mom, with your mom as well, and your your parents, you know, you know, life and experiences as well. 
but um, I think it's a very important thing for people to hear and to be intentional about. Uh, one of my last questions there before I let you go, because I know I've had you for a while. Um, you know, you mentioned it about, you know, every son wants to be um, an improvement of their father, right? Yeah. And, and, that, and, and that's the goal. So in your life, well, looking at, at everything and, you know, what would you say um, you've improved on in your fatherhood experience um, as opposed to being a son? And what are the things that you hope that I would improve on in my experience as I'm a father to my son? Well, um, my dad loved God and he loved people. He loved his family. Oh my goodness, he loved his wife. He loved his family. Mm. Uh, I think I've tried. Well, mm. maybe I'm not yeah. worth here. Maybe I'm not worth oh, here. Yeah, I'm better than my dad <laughs> because I don't think I have what it takes to do that. But I have really tried and um, I'm still striving to do more by the grace of God. So, what, I, what, do, what do I think you should improve upon in my life? As you see in my life, hey, reach more people than me with the love of Christ with the love of Christ. It has a way of making, just going on its own. It has a life of its own. And it just goes. And I see you already position for that. Believe me, I see it. I can see it. I can see it. And uh, love your wife. Come on, to beats. Love your children. And how do you know you love your children? Oh, when, when, when the children themselves are so proud of their father, right. like, something has happened. No matter what they become, they're so proud of their father. And uh, what else? Be satisfied with what you have. Mm. But please, be ambitious to acquire everything that God has called yours. That's not mm. important. That mm. is appreciating God for who he is and who he has made you and what he has given you. So be ready to take everything that God has given you and be grateful for it. Yeah. Amen. I mean, like you said, me, you know, you said I should reach more people. I'm thinking, hey, all right, perhaps we got all things possible. But um, I believe but dad, so um before I let you go, if you just wanna I know a lot of young people um on, on this live um listening, um if you would give them any words of encouragement or advice or, or anything that you want them to take home yeah. with you know, just speak to them real quick. Yes. You know the Bible says that the glory of the youth is their strength. Please don't waste your strength. You have so much about you and the strength. I there the Bible actually is talking of physical strength, but I know that mental strength is part of it. And the emotional strength is part of it. I know spiritual strength is part of it. So I want to advise you, take advantage of the, of the moment. Ask God to help you to utilize fully what he has made available to you. Because you see, the foundation you build today will determine the level of the future you are building. Hmm. If you look at it, David, what he did as a teenager, remained and kept resounding the whole of his life. Joseph. Daniel, Esther, name them. So when I, when I see youths, I say, don't waste the moment. Please make the best of the moment. Always know that there's nothing that can stop you. With God on your side, where you think that you didn't have a good education, God will make a way for you. I give examples of people who God begins to raise, and because they didn't have the adequate exposure, it looks like they're going to be stifled. No, they were not. God, we just open it up and they'll go and put themselves. They'll put themselves. You remember the sister in church, I remember when, with her mama. Mm. She mm. stood, not once, twice in the White House, Women's Day. Introdu the second time she was in, she introduced Obama's wife. She sat with my mind. She was going to introduce the first lady to the whole world. From what? And where did she start from? Mm. Not even an investing graduate, but today. MBA in front of university. So God will always make a way for you. Remove every limit for whatsoever. And with God, nothing is impossible. So if there's a prayer, may I be everything that God wants me to be in life. There's no limit on my life. When man being Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away, all things are becoming new.
don't get the shell, don't get the shell. That cross can stop you. You have been blessed beyond the cross. Because when you died, uh, it said uh, in Christ for you to become born again, you died total death. Then you resurrected total resurrection. You just were dead. When you died, there was no life. Because we were dead with him, we were buried with him in baptism. But we came out to life. No death whatsoever. So I am certain of the future. So I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, go forth. Go on the especially. You are adequately equipped and you are unstoppable. Remember, the Holy Ghost will never leave you alone. Uh -huh. He's always there to assist you, always there to help you. That's why I say he's the helper. You can make it and you will make it in Jesus' name. As a husband, as a wife, as a minister, mm -hmm. as a person, whatever it is in life, Nigeria has a new breed of young people coming up who can never be intimidated. I am proud of you. My generation is proud of you. God bless you. Have a good time. Enjoy your life in Jesus' name. Amen, Pops. I, I appreciate it. Um, I, and they, they, they were asking that you should pray, but you just kind of kind of released some words over them um, towards the end of that. But I want to say thank you, Pops. This was very insightful. I am privileged. You know, a lot of times I know we, we, we do this, we, we take the, the ones that are closest to us for granted because we, we, we have access to them. But I recognize the gift of God you are um, to this generation. I'm blessed to be your son. Like I said, no, no other man could father me. Uh, with, with and again, a lion can't give birth to a goat, so I know that. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, uh, Pastor J, honest, I am very, very proud of you. And that's Thank you. Man. And I know what you are capable of doing. I know your capacity. I know you are yet to scratch the surface. Man. God will protect you and God will keep you. You will man. survive even your own dreams in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. Love, you. Love you, Pops. Thank you so much for being on here. They, they've been they've been clamoring for a part two. So who knows? <laughs> I'll get you back on here again, maybe on a different topic. But I mean, I, I must say this is the most amount of people I've ever had on my life, uh, on my life ever. You know, all watching at once. So I mean, thank you for helping me break a, a personal record. <laughs> That's why I need to bring you more often. But thank you, Pops. I appreciate you. I will have this. Um, I'll put it together and then I will probably upload it on, on my YouTube and I'll send you a link so people can go and watch it for those who missed it to watch the full interview again, uh, part one and part two. But thank you so much, Dad. Love you loads. Um, and thank you for being on here and being such a blessing. Uh, it's, been my, it's been my pleasure, Pastor Jay. God bless you. All right, Pops. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, so my dad just left the building. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, it was awesome having that conversation with my father. Um, thank you guys for coming on. Um, definitely, I will get him. I'll get him again to have conversation. I think it's important that we learn from those we can while we can, not to take them for, for granted. So please, if there are other topics that you want to have me and my father discuss, DM me so that I can put that on there and then we can come back again and... Um, have conversations with him again thank you so much guys i appreciate you guys hope you learned something i hope it was impactful and please remember to make sure you give your father a call fathers have the affairs um make sure you give your mother a call don't wait till don't always assume that they'll always be here you know let's not give roses to the dead give them roses while they're alive appreciate them let them know how they feel uh how you feel how much you love and care for them you know be intentional um and um uh, you know Let's just appreciate them while they're here, okay? So much love, much blessings. I'm out. Thank you so much for joining us in this conversations with my father. And we'll definitely do this again. Y'all stay safe. Y'all be blessed. Have an awesome night. And um, I'm out. Peace. God bless you. Bye.